$120,000 in grants, over 20 workers, numerous workshops across the country, over 100 projects in snow farming across the country. This is the story of a young snow farmer here in Ghana. This is the story of Trisolis Farms. There's a lot of money looking for people yeah. to work with. When you say that the young people get <laughs> aggrieved, they're like, yeah. where's the money? Where's but the money? I've gotten about 120,000. I've traveled to the Netherlands, to Europe, a few uh, places. I haven't gone to America aside that. I've been to almost everywhere. I've read a lot. Coming here, I've read a lot about you. Hundred and twenty thousand dollars in grants. I watched a video like that. that. That's like something else. <laughs> serious. But before we even get into all that juicy stuff, I want to know who is um, the Trisolus, the CEO of Trisolus Farms. Okay. Uh, thank you for having us as well. My name is Felix Sapia. Uh, I'm a civil engineer turned farmer, so uh, the year was somewhere 2015. After the university, you know, you have to look for jobs, there isn't, so we decided to start something. So as a civil engineer, uh, that I had a little bit of passion into uh, agric, we started snail farming. Uh, I'm a father of three girls, uh, I'm married, I have uh, about 22 workers here for snails alone, and I have another uh, 43-ish. Uh, when it comes to the pepper, I do commercial quantity pepper and other projects as well. So, okay. yeah, that's Felix. All right. So, uh, we've all met Felix. But then, how did you get into snail farming? Oh, okay. how did the idea start? So, uh, after school, uh, we had the opportunity. I did waste and water management. I also did civil engineering structures. So, we went to Coca Cola back then. Uh, there was a post for water and waste management. And when I went, the same people in our class were there. And they were like, Oh, Felix Abadia, then we should all go because we know definitely you will get there. And I was like, hmm. These people, like my friends, helped me in that, you know, high esteem. So, why should I still go take the same job and close at six, six, uh, come six and close at six? So I decided that why don't we help ourselves? So we did a survey and uh, wanted to know what they would want to do. Everyone said, oh, we have small space at our backyard. And we, we can do something. Just that most of the people who wanted to help were renting. Okay. You know, so you couldn't do poultry, you couldn't do anything that smelled or make noise. So we said, okay, what can we do in our grade? Because we knew everybody will eat. Even robots need oil made from something in our grade to put in them. So we said, okay, then we can start snail farming because they do not smell, they do not make noise. So we're searching for something that didn't smell or make noise that all my friends could do at their backyard. And then snails was excellent. So my granddad was also a cocoa farmer. I used to go visit him sometimes and at the backyard, he will pour water, his leftover food, banche, the under part, when they finish peeling it. He will throw it there, and the snails will come and eat. He will pick some into his soup. And every day, they kept on coming. You know, because he had water, and I asked him, how do you do snails? And he said, oh, he doesn't really raise them. As far as there's water, there's food, they will always keep coming. I said, wow, that's interesting. So I brought the concept, and it fitted what we wanted to do excellent, like, how people get employment and something to eat as well and that was very interesting for me because snails don't smell they don't make noise and snails are the most profitable farm anymore per square meter okay. so you can put about 20 snails in a square meter that is a meter by meter and they will lay up to about 300 eggs in total for you and then you can sell the 300 at maybe even just three cds and get 900 cds just within a span of a year. Wow. So that's the interesting part of snow. That's why we chose snow. Okay. And you moved from there to this point where you are doing over hundreds, hundreds of projects across Africa. Yes. How did you start professionally or I would say like a company? Yeah. Okay. So as we started, we came into the field, we saw that there wasn't any competition. You know, people were not really into snails. 
it was a niche market and like someone who had the dream of employing more people the idea was to create more opportunities and how do you do that if i'm doing it for me and my family alone that is not really a legacy project or something that will employ people so we said why don't we become a company because a lot of people also wanted something they could do on the side if you are a banker teacher they wanted something that they didn't take too much of their time like give them additional income and still be able to do this on a large scale so we said there's no one helping people do the structures so why don't we look into it i'm a civil engineer i have other friends who are civil engineers electrical engineers why don't we put our brains together and come up so we came up with the greenhouse that was the first concept development we did and then now we are here at the wooden shed or the wooden construction um so the, with the greenhouse how did that whole idea come about because i know that you can do it normally on the ground what's um triggered that idea to build a greenhouse okay so uh fortunate for me i tell people school is important to give you some level of knowledge and some level of awareness that one you have to go to school for so there are some certain things that school teaches you like design thinking how to put certain things together how to do analysis on something so we sat down and said who is the biggest person in this steel industry and it was csr but they were just doing training not giving people commercial sizes and all that. We also went to CSR to train for the first time, and we saw that, sorry to say, no no harm to them, but all they gave was public knowledge. Okay. You know, there are three types of snails. They do this. Snail can lay a hundred per uh, snail. Can do this, can do that. We said, okay, that is nice, but what about the structures? Who does that? No one. So we said, for people to move from hobby to commercial, we have to do structures just like poetry when people started they were doing at their backyard you know they'll go and come sometimes they go they don't come but if you wanted something commercial you have to put safety security systems in place and that is why we started we wanted something that the snails will be in we can count them we can see them we can feed them we can water them but other animals cannot go and catch them your chicken can go out and a dog can just grab it but in a poultry farm i don't think a, a dog can come in and grab you know poultry the same thing we were thinking a system that can house can keep away their pests like house house flies like uh, uh soldier flies other things that will harm them keep it away and keep the snails in so that you can count it whenever you need it so that's why we started that but our system was also going to be that we can get elements into it like water like uh, the wind can easily blow through because snails do not like heat you know so we thought about all those and we we're looking for a very good material that can let us go on a large scale that's why we started with the greenhouse okay. a lot of research you might have, yeah. Yeah. must have gone into that so how did you raise funds to go to start your first project like i was saying earlier the good thing is that when you are doing something good, there's an adage in tree that they all fruit your apa and your pian. They didn't say when you are standing under. They say once you have started, people will push you. So we spoke to a few people who were also interested in snails, but they were also doing in hobby. And we said we have this idea of putting together a net. This this, but we have to import it. There's not any net like that in Ghana. It's black. It, it provides shade. The snails can live under there's vegetation there's this and they said okay how much will it cost so we put together a cost and like everything we document every part of our business documentation is very important so we did videos show them that oh, we've done small this is how much we got we did this we even used the normal net the black one that we have in the house to do but because it is very it's not durable it will get torn in a very uh, short time so they said okay if you can get that, maybe take this 5,000 CDs, take this 2,000, and then buy the material, do one and let's see. Okay. So we did one. All the people in that uh, department or that niche market, that is snails, wanted to see something. Because they also wanted to expand, but there was nobody there. So they said, oh, 
if this new kid wants to try something, I can spare two thousand. So let me give it to him, and everything came together, and then we did that. In Africa, I tell people one. So far as you are born in Africa, you are already at a disadvantage because of other things that uh, our predecessors did and other people did. Like uh, they were not really truthful. People would give them money for investments and not come back. So what I tell people is document every part of it. Okay. So we did that right from the word go. We have videos going back all the way to 2014 where we're doing snails in small boxes. So you mention your name, they go and check you out and say, oh, okay, try so let's see. They've started small boxes, they're already training people, giving people boxes. So if he wants to move on to a larger one, then I trust him because he has about 20 videos or he's already done two years or one year, you know. So I tell young people, don't think that everyone is not willing to trust you or everyone will trust you. Give them evidence. Especially in Africa, the only recommendation we have is our videos, our storytelling. That is the only way people can trust us and give us that money. So, so this is where we started way back in 2015. Uh, still, Atunzu is still the same though. Yeah. So once they, I go to any farmer who is into snail, he will say, already they are like a bit aggrieved about young people. They will say, you know you don't like jobs you don't want to work you always want quick money so we we'll say oh no we've been working look at our profile look at this look at that and they go in there and say okay he's been working so i can spare this because i know worst case even if it brings the net i can use it to do something else or something you know so. it's true it's it's easier to find you on the internet yeah so would you say that's what helped you to the grants, get the grants of about 120,000 dollars. That's like a lot. Yeah, yes. that's a lot. So I also tell people one thing, tenacity, right? You are determined for something to happen. Even in Christianity, they say if you speak, it comes to pass. In other religions as well, they think that anything you can perceive with your mind, it comes to pass. The same thing. I'm not a Christian, by the way, but I also believe that anything you can do or picture it in your mind, you can develop. That's why we came to meet aeroplanes and other things. People perceived it and brought it to mind. So what I do is that I do a lot of research. I do a lot of content creation. I also do documentation and put. No one will give you their money, even your mom or your dad. When you want some money, they will ask you questions. What are you using it for? Who are you going to eat it with or spend it with? What is this going to? So if you have a clear plan, and then you pitch to people and they see that, oh, this is not a one person thing, but it's a whole, it's affecting about 22 people. And this guy has been in it for five years and he's still going strong. Let's give him the money. Okay. You know, and join a lot of groups as well that are entrepreneurial based. Uh, there are other things called hubs. So hubs are where people go to get training on uh, how to be a good entrepreneur, bookkeeping, finances, everything. So join such groups as well. Yeah. Okay. So apart from being able to keep your books, documentation, and then uh, uh, putting yourself out there, what other qualities do you need? What other qualities has helped you to this point? Okay. So I sleep like just four hours a day. Uh, I believe in one thing, hard work. You know, I'm not saying people should sleep less yeah. because someone can be up all night and not do anything. But research is very important. Everything under this sun has been discovered already. Okay. It is just covered. We need to discover it. Just open it up and, you know, know what is there. So there's a lot of other resources out there. Like when you go on YouTube, you know, like I saw you online and I was very, uh, like I was blown. My mind was blown at what you were doing as well. So people can just follow just you. Learn all the videos you are posting. That alone is a value of information that cannot be quantified. So I tell people, whatever field you are in, research. Don't think you are the only one. Don't think, oh, I'm the only big person in this game now. We research around us and get that. So there are also a lot of people that there's a lot of money looking for people yeah. to work with. When you say that the young people get <laughs> I agree they are like, yeah. where is the money? Where's but the money? I've gotten about 120,000. I've traveled to the Netherlands, to Europe, a few 
places I haven't gone to America aside that I've been to almost everywhere. And it is all due to these accelerator courses and donor agencies that don't want us to come there. They want us to sit here, set up businesses for our folks to do as well. So I apply to everything. I research on the donor agency or the person giving out the money and see okay. that these people like you to employ women. These people like you to do that. And then you apply. And with that, you talk to them about your project. And that happens. Uh, so will you say you are one of the first people to bring the greenhouse uh, idea or projects into Uganda? Yes, we pioneered the greenhouse industry. I brought a gentleman called Chris uh, from Zimbabwe. He was doing greenhouses for other sectors. Then I showed him what we wanted to do, the idea. I think he had come to do one project for a certain big company here and things didn't go so well. So he was still finding his way about and I met him and I said, it's interesting that we're also looking for an engineer to help us with the designs and everything. So let's partner up and do that. You know, So we partnered up and started. That was like three years ago. Uh, welcome to Trisolis. Today uh, I brought this package to a client, uh, Kweku here. And uh, I would like to kindly ask him what he feels about our service, the box, how it was manufactured, and the setup. So, sir, uh, how was the setup? Okay, with the setup, I'm really, really glad about it. And it's actually beyond expectation because I actually thought it was going to be in a box. But with how it is, it is really nice and it makes it fun to be in such a business. Setup. We started this way back three years. We have done first design, second design, our third design, and now we have switched from this. Now that people know how we are doing it, we have now moved. Most people don't even know of the locking profiles and things that we use to fuse the net and metal together. They don't even have an idea. It's now that people are getting to know that. And immediately they go to know we are also moving on to something better. So we are always ideating, but we were the pioneers of the greenhouse. Okay. So this is your new, is this your new project? That yes. You're this is the new project. Can you tell us um, a little about it? Okay. So the interesting part is that we are very big on durability. So this, you can see, is made of hardwood. So this can last for up to 10 years. 10 years. And you don't need to treat the wood. This wood is hardwood already. So it, it doesn't get decayed. There isn't any uh, worms that will eat it. So you don't treat it. That means that snails, whenever they climb anything, will lick or walk on it and it will affect it. So we saw that this one important thing is the wood. The net, someone can just cut it. Even though you have a padlock, I can just use my hands to pry open and pick all your stuff. The other thing is that because of the open roof nature of the greenhouse, most places in Accra are low line. There's a lot of flooding. Even when you came here, you saw some puddles of water all around. And that, a lot of the water comes in and then it settles in. Mind you, with We've put plastic all around, so the water doesn't have anywhere to go. So it will flood the whole place, flood your small snails, flood even the larger ones, and you will be in trouble. The other thing is that most places in Accra have a lot of salt content under, because we are all close to the sea. So when the water goes down, it brings out the soil, it dissolves the soil, capillarity, it comes up. So it comes up and the salt settles. Any snail that is working on there will die because the concentration of salt is so high. So the open roof nature meant that earlier it was good, but now we saw that a lot of the places in Accra will have that problem. Same here. It floods, we have a lot of salt content and it kills everything. So that this one doesn't have an open roof nature, it's sealed. And snails are nocturnal, they eat mostly at night. They are like cockroaches, they come out at night only. They like total dark. But here, there's so much light going in. Even though we reduce, this is 80% uh, shade net. 80% means it allows just about 20% in there. But still, that light is like you, a human, looking into a car light at night. That's how the snows feel. So, early morning, they don't eat up to in the evening because they are all hiding from the light. But imagine, here, 
there's total darkness. Morning, afternoon, evening, total darkness. Someone might be worried that wouldn't that be unnatural? No. Sometimes you leave a box somewhere and cockroaches will be in there. You don't know. One day you go open and there's millions of cockroaches in there. Ask yourself, do they need sunlight? No. Nocturnals have a way of producing their own vitamins, like the one related to sun and all that. And they don't need any sunlight. So, still are nocturnal. They don't need sunlight. So, this means that they will eat all day, all night. Whenever they want, they sleep whenever they want as well. So that's one interesting part. There's total darkness here, so they still don't hide. And one other thing is that the open nature of it means that when we go inside, you feel that it's a bit cooler, but still the wind that blows from outside comes in. Imagine if you have five of these greenhouses at one place, and there's a disease in one. Right? It blows to all the others. That is one disadvantage. Hamatan. Snails can sense Hamatan a month before it even counts. Most people now know that their snails have started uh, going into hibernation. They stop eating because now they know that the Hamatan is coming. But imagine this. You think you have a greenhouse, you have water system, everything is kumbaya, everything is good. In the Hamatan, the snails will still go into estivation. Because they can feel the wind blowing in. Even though there's water, you can water 10 times a day. It will still, it's a natural thing for them. They do that to save themselves from dying. Because they think there will be scarcity of food. Imagine here, it's room temperature. Or what temperature you want is what you give it here. We are able to mitigate the rain. We are able to manipulate uh, the weather. You can blow in hot air. You can blow in cold air. That is you decide. That's that's the interesting part. So we have mist blowers. So the mist blowers either introduce hot air. So when we are sterilizing the the setup, we put in a chemical that is not harmful to the stem. Now that is another breakthrough we've gotten. Earlier people didn't know how to treat the soil, so they use harmful substances. And after you have killed the other insects, snails are also insects almost because they don't have back brain, uh, vertebra they don't have any uh, exoskeleton they just have the shell right so in in eliminating other ones you are posing a threat to your steps so one thing is that we now have that chemical we put in it it gets hot and it drenches the whole soil and kills everything in there but after it evaporates and goes that's the interesting part of the new discovery that's like 100% advantage of that. Exactly. So this one, it boils all the soil, like literally boils everything, like kills everything in the soil, even the microbial organism. So this kills about 99% of the whole setup. And we have that technology and we are willing to share with you. And, and you are like the first person to do that. To do this is our Ghana. first thing. So wow. we spend a lot of money on research as well. We help people. And we we'll do free training. Okay. The interesting part is that when you're doing free training, people give you ideas. Why don't we do it like this? Have you tried this? But people, when you charge people, they just come and listen. They don't want to give input. But if they think that we are all together, we are all part of the same system, they willingly give you things for free. Now we are even having a 37 acre land that was given to us for free by someone who is into the stem. What how innovative we are putting on so for the, the setup, yes, yeah, so that's how we can introduce hot air or hot uh, liquids in there. And we also have uh, a, a system that can blow in directly hot air, a humidifier type that can blow in hot air. We also have a mist blower that can also be cool air. Have we done this for anyone yet? Oh yes, we've done this for about six clients so far and they were all testing they are part of our ecosystem so they will test give us feedback but now it's ready for us to roll it out so we have one here we have one at a brief and then we have the other six that will go for other clients as well is it is it expensive to compare to the, the normal net house if the interesting thing is that we for instance we don't look for profit on the building itself we are just looking at buying back the snail so 
if you are looking at putting your profit on, then it will be more expensive more than expensive, yeah. the net. Okay. But the good thing is that it is just about two thousand CDs more than the net. The net. Oh, okay. That's very interesting because this is almost a house, and the client was even jokingly saying that oh. And when I hear that, then I sleep in it. If yeah. the snow doesn't even go well, I sleep in it myself. Also. So, this is a new system that is going to revolutionize the snail industry. Because one, there's not too much water coming in. You can now control how much water comes in. You can now save money on the water that you were sprinkling, even in dry season. Because there wouldn't be wind going in to dry it. And there wouldn't be any wind blowing either airborne disease from the next to this one and vice versa and the other interesting part is that this you can control insects and other animals 100% okay. so apart from this i've seen some small boxes over there what are, are they yes yes yeah, so we are like a political party we say the grassroots people are okay. our people we don't go without them so most people were saying oh felix you started out and Specialist was helping everybody, you know. Now you are yeah, looking at the bigger yeah, money, yeah. and so we don't want people to think that we are too big. Yeah. We even have budget ones that are just 700 seeds, okay. small ones that it comes together with soil, snails, food, there are gloves that you wear, protective gear, everything for people who want to start. Because we are also for the youth, with the youth, because we are also youth as well. So we are helping people do that. So in in retrospect, even though we have from the greenhouses, it goes up to 100,000 CDs. We built a single system for a client up to 100,000 CDs. And we built systems as small as uh, 12,000 CDs. And this one in particular is 5 meters by 5 meters. And this is 36,000 CDs. And we have another one which is 67,000 CDs. This is the largest uh, system that we have so far. And the boxes, you can have a single box, a double box, and a triple box. The single is 700, the double is 1,400 and 2,000. It comes with food and everything. So apart from that, do you do management? Because I received calls from uh, people outside. They want someone to manage their funds for them. But the problem is with trust. So sometimes I don't know what we can do or what you will be thinking about that, what you want to do about that. So we, like I said, we do free training. Free training. So we encourage the youth to come learn for free. Yeah. The interesting thing is that there are a lot of people, like you are saying, looking for people to manage their farms. Yeah. But if you come in and you learn and you excel, yeah. and you will even provide internship, you can come three days, five days, do your own internship, you know, and then you are done, you go. Once we know that this guy is ready to work and he has the skills now, a client will say, can you recommend somebody for me? We can give them your number. They call you and then you deal directly with the client and you can have employment. So whilst you're also giving them your knowledge, they're also paying you and you can also partner with them. I know a guy who was also skilled in other things. So he partnered with the client. Whatever profit they get, he gets 40%, the client gets 60%. It's not always we have to do employment. We have to, as youth, think outside the box as well. Think partnership, think collaboration. So if he says, I'll give you a thousand CDs a month, then you can say, okay, what about if I am able to utilize all your lands and then I can make you X amount, then we share the proceeds, you know. That is a more uh, innovative thinking than salary. Salary, it can suck you in. So for people who are outside, that are prey to, um, that are vulnerable in a sense. How do we bridge that gap? Okay. So I tell them never be an absentee farmer. Okay. Because in Ghana, there are some that don't have uh, the integrity that others have. They don't care. They will take your money and go away. Don't think about tomorrow. So what our advice is that they should look for entities like yourself. And it is high time that entities in the agri sector set up a small school that can train people that we know are reliable to take care of other people's farm for them. So we, for instance, somewhere next year, we are launching a Grow For Me system. Like, uh, you give us the money, then we will grow. If it is snails, if it is uh, mushrooms, other things that you want, then we will share profits with the client. But that is yet to, we are yet to launch that. 
So that is also in the pipeline. So for those outside, I would say that look for a credible company. People talk so much, but haven't built anything. They don't have any name. They don't have any, and they come into the ecosystem and pretend that they are exceptional. Basically, they brought everything. But in retrospect, if you visit the person, you should see things on the ground. That's why here in Dansoman, we provide a demonstration farm where people can come and have a look and be able to do something. Someone called me, wanted a project at the house with him, and I told him, oh, Felix, I, I have this number. I said, oh, no, no, that guy is too big. <laughs> what, what do you say to somebody like that? Okay, I think Ghanaians, we, Ghanaians, we have this attitude where we are afraid of the unknown. But instead of us to ask, we assume. It's bad to assume. So I always tell people, never assume, always be sure. That's my motto. Never assume, always be sure. Because you might think that because this rise, there's a lot of people surrounding it. It might be good. It might not be good. It might be the only food there. So you have to ask. Like when you came closer, now we know that there are other boxes that we do, which are 700 cities. That's the most budget friendly we have. And we have another 1,000 for up to 67,000 cities. We've even built a hundred thousand CDs greenhouse for somebody before, which was a long one. And there's even a client who is using one of our greenhouses to do contumerate, just contumerate for export. You know, so if you don't come close and you assume that oh it's big, no. We have clients that buy even two snails from us to start. We have a snail feed that starts from 15 CDs, 30 CDs, 50, up to any quantity you want. When we are exporting, we export about 30,000 snails pieces there. That's a different client. Yeah. And there are clients that will write a check and everything will be calm. Then we, I'll be smiling all the way to the bank. And there are clients too that come and say, oh, I just want 10 snails. We are able to help all those clients because we know everything has a smaller beginning. And things with smaller beginnings usually have greater ends. So. We are willing to accommodate all clients and be able to help everybody. Okay, so um, we, are, we don't. We are not trying to look into your achievements, but I want to know what has Green House or your business done for you to inspire us, to inspire those who are watching Green House. Okay, so like someone asked Bob Marley, "Are you rich?" Then he asks, "What is your definition of rich?" You know. So my definition of being rich is one travel experience. Through these greenhouses, I've traveled to Netherlands, France, uh, uh, Germany, Italy. Uh, I've been to everywhere. There's even a, a, a city called Terrasco. Terrasco is a snail city. Okay. Everything they do is snails. They do snail candy, snail food, everything. And I've been there, kind courtesy of Trisolis and what we do. So I tell people always provide value, and that value will give you more value in the future as a reward. And uh, in terms of other things that I am very proud of, like employment, here alone we employ 22 people who would have otherwise maybe not have a place to do. Uh, and they do, might not have, uh, they might have family members relying on them, but this has been an avenue where every month I can give them something and say, hey, this is it. They are paid SNIT, they are paid pension, everything done, you know. There's a difference between pension and SNIT as well. There's a pension fund, which is tier two, and there's a tier one. We do all that. We pay taxes and everything. So I'm very proud to say that if I see these people working about it and, you know, they go like, yes, boss. You know, I feel proud. Not them calling me boss, but knowing that someone now has a sustainable way of feeding their families every day. And for houses and all that, I would say I'm a rich man, but I would say I'm getting there.